regular hearings during the course of this guy's confirmation. Why didn't this come up? And I think Lindsey Graham, who I think did a great job in saying, you know, I voted. I don't agree uh, philosophically with Judge Sotomayor or Judge Kagan, but I voted for them because they had records. They were credible judges. They were they had ju- they were judges who had uh, been recommended. And by the way, the a- the American Bar Association, who I'm not a member of, never was. Uh, they uh, came out and gave them their highest rating, and all of a sudden, after this whole thing, they've now t- you know they're now part of the. Uh, they're asking for further investigation. further investigation. Right. I just find that the the impression from a lot of people. I think it scares us when due process is not considered. It should scare everyone, men and women, anyone who is uh, could potentially now just because somebody accuses you, you are now guilty until proven innocent. And I think that's a dangerous both, standard. Both people right. deserve the investigation. Both the both Ford and Kavanaugh. Deserve, yes, I think that the FBI is going to be doing that. They're going to be. They working. are doing it. Yeah. I mean, and people who are complaining that they're investigating it really, it's both of them are entitled to that because she's making an accusation against him. He's denying it. What what the what the FBI will investigation will turn up, we don't know. They may just come up with more affidavits from people. Some will support him. Some will support her. It may be just more of a little bit of both. Right, and I'm not opposed to them doing the investigation. I, you still do have to question, why didn't Senator Feinstein bring this up during the regular course of the hearings? Why did she wait, what, six weeks or eight weeks well, or whatever? Let, let me tell you what my thought is on it. You can react to this. I've, I, Rocco knows I've said it several times. But my feeling is this, that the that the, that the Democrats are concerned that if, she, if he gets on the court that, that – women's reproductive rights will be jeopardized, that he'll, any decision that comes before him that gives him an opportunity to erode women's rights to make decisions about reproduction will be eroded if if that comes before the court, and that the concern of the Democrats is they want to do anything they can to get one of these three or four senators who are undecided to vote no so that they don't have to risk that. I think you're absolutely right. I think that's what it really is about. So it, go, it, so it really isn't about Judge Kavanaugh's. No, it's about abortion. It's really not about Judge Kavanaugh's character, about whether he did I, it or I, not. I, I and I'll give you so a either. perfect example. I was right. in the airport uh, last week on Monday night ha- dr- flying to D.C., and a woman came up to me, and I could see she recognized me, and she was started to get very nervous. I could see her behavior. She ran over to me, and she said, are you Claudia Tenney? And I said, yes. She said her name. And she said, you have got to do everything you can to stop Judge Kavanaugh. And she went through this whole thing about how do you, she looked, she said to me, do you know, and I'm paraphrasing, do you know how drunk he was and that he had, he raped her and she got pregnant, he would be stopping her from getting an abortion. And I said, well, let's see what would happen here. Like, why, don't you think we should go through the hearings, let them both have their say. This is before they both testified. Mm-hmm. Let them let let us judge the credibility because, as you know, it's not a court of law. Let us judge the credibility. And she goes, I don't care what he has to say. She goes, I don't want him on the court. Yeah, so can. in the end, it's really yeah. about politics. It has. So we're what dragging this guy, whether it's true or not. They don't seem to care, mm-hmm. and oh, that's no. what concerns well, me. Is it's it's I don't think so at either. any cost. And let me just comment on the the Roe versus Wade decision. If we were to overturn Roe versus Wade, if the Supreme Court were deciding to vote, I don't think it's going to happen, nor do I think Judge Kavanaugh would vote that way, because I, d- I think that he would be respect stare decisis or precedent. Maybe he would, but even if he did, this would go to the states, and the states would make a decision, and New York State has already voted many, many times, and the governor has already pushed it. New York State would become a late-term abortion state, and that's what we would be. So... Let the people. The people have already decided because they elected officials. They elected the governor. They elected so. So if Roe v. Wade was overturned, in theory, states would still have the opportunity to do what they want to do. The whole issue with Roe v. Wade, the decision is that the federal government took on the issue, not the states. But Mm -hmm. if Roe v. Wade were overturned, it would leave the decision up to the states. The fact that a woman has a constitutional right under the U.S. Constitution to have an abortion during the first trimester of the pregnancy, and no state can can affect that right that the woman has. No state can pass a law. Under Roe v. Wade, that. yeah, they, they derived a privacy right to create this. this right. Right. Even Which though, is, based what, on Griswold v. Connecticut and then eventually Roe v. Wade, the, the channel of cases. But it's interesting, though, but even if Roe v. Wade were overturned, which I don't think is likely, it hasn't. Look at, like, let me just point out one, uh, why you never know what a judge is going to do, regardless of what you think their position is. One of the most important landmark decisions in the U.S. Supreme Court that affected our region um, was written by Justice Ginsburg, the most 
left-leaning, many would argue, the most left-leaning judge on the court, she decided the Cheryl decision, which said that Ray Halberter had to pay his taxes. She decided that. So I don't think you can always say just because a judge is, you know, tends to be more of a liberal or more of a conservative, that is going to be their interpretation of the Constitution or the law before them. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think we're going down a dangerous road to assassinate the character of a person who is in front of this court. You don't know where, where he's going to rule on this. Look at, I mean, many of these, Justice Kennedy was appointed by a Republican. You know, I, I'm just saying, you know, to do that, and that's what I think it's important. Uh, I think that's the whole, I think that's yeah. what this whole thing's about. I Frederick, agree. I uh, think you're totally 100% agree. right. Yeah. Frederick Nichols uh, is still in studio. It's about you, politics. It's not about the court. You want to weigh in on this, Frederick? Yeah, and then, I Claudia, I, I want to get back to you because you were involved in, in one of these, uh, you, you questioned uh, a senior staffer and a special mm-hmm. advisor from the uh, Federal Housing Finance uh, Agency on, on accusations of sexual harassment. I want to get into that as well. But, Frederick, your thoughts on uh, that, What's Kevin? interesting to me, and I'd like to know from two attorneys your opinion <laughs> about this, uh, in the end of when the, we get to the end of all of this and it comes to find out that people were lying they disrespected our system and they had affidavits and sworn statements and then in the end they get investigated and found that they were lying should those individuals be held accountable as far as punitive damages or go to jail the answer is yes yes, the, perjury the is yes. however it's very difficult to prove perjury if all you have is one person saying this is the truth and the other person says no that's a lie this is the truth and just like with with Kavanaugh and and Ford, each one is has given sworn testimony, and you can't believe both of them. One of them is not true. There's no, they can't both be true. But how are you going to prove which one is? But if it can be established that someone's lying, which usually comes as a result of a later admission, the person will say, you know what, I I wasn't being truthful. That's usually when the perjury charge comes around, but not just one person's word against another. I, I think what. What Frederick's referring to are the people that, not not Judge Kavanaugh and not Dr. No, the Ford, there are right. witnesses that are contradicting their own statements. Exactly. They're putting, they signed an affidavit, and, and now they're saying something completely exactly. different. So they signed an affidavit, and now they're claiming in an open statement, like the the last accuser, is, I can't think of her name, yes. the third woman. Swanny. She Yeah, yes. she put on a, per, a, a completely diametrically opposed statement. One was sworn, and one was a TV statement. And so, you know, are these perjury charges? I think someone should look into those. I mean, you're perjuring. You're you're actually now getting into possibly libel and slander charges against someone that aren't, you know, you're affecting somebody's uh, livelihood. Congresswoman Claudia Tenney joining us here on the Talk of the Town. We'll step aside. We'll come back, and maybe we'll get your thoughts on uh, your involvement with uh, questioning Simone Grimes and her accusations of sexual harassment against the uh, director of the Federal Housing Finance Agency. We'll do that when we return. It's the Talk of the Town, Talk 100.7 FM. Love to hear from you. 624-0870 is the number to reach us, or the text line, 623-0373. 